Last name on the list, mate. And this is... It's been brewing for a while. <laughs> and I'll hand over to you for, for his statement in a second. But Justin Langer is no longer coach, head coach, mm-hmm. of this Australian cricket team. And he is 2-1 to one odds on favourite for the England role at the moment. And now that might just be everyone going, oh, yeah, we'll take the guy. But it's time as Australian coach. He retained the Ashes in 2019, bearing in mind mm-hmm. he took over after Darren Lehman's infamous ball tampering scandal. So he was the man to repair Australian cricket. He won the T20 World Cup despite playing no T20 cricket with his first team for a year. He won the Ashes 4-0 in Australia despite playing no Test match cricket for a, for a year and was subsequently asked to reapply for his mm-hmm. job, um, given those credentials. And was only offered a short-term contract. He is now mm. available in market, Rich. He mm-hmm. is exceptional um, in terms of the output that he got, he, he, that he's been able to obtain. He took over Western Australia. Uh, during that time, they won the One Day Cup. They were runners-up in the Sheffield Shield for two or three years. Won the Big Bash two or three times. A winning coach. What, what do we want? He's not bad, is he? He's not bad. It's, there's, there's obviously something else to play if, if after the, what you've just reeled off, they only yes. wanted to offer him a six-month extension. So this is the whole thing, isn't it? It's not just about his success as a coach. There's clearly something else at play. Yeah. Um, and that's uh, that's the big, big part of this, isn't it? So his <laughs> his um, resignation, it's not, it's not mm. a resignation. It is a resignation. They offered him yeah. a contract. He said no because yeah. he saw it as a kick in his face. Um, Mm. he takes a few pot shots back at Cricket Australia and there's been a lot of storm going on from players going or ex-players going how can you not back this guy he's done all Mm. this when we were in a sorry state and his CV's pretty good and he delivers results what more do you want Mm. yeah and that's the thing you've got to remember when what he who he was and uh, sorry, who Australia, Cricket Australia were at the moment he was taken on, wasn't it? We had the, a lot of fallout from Sandpaper Gate and yeah. all the nonsense around that. And, you know, I'm not saying everything was handled brilliantly because if it had have been, um, a certain ex wicketkeeper batsman captain, sorry, wicketkeeper captain wouldn't have been in the role for the last two years. Um, so, but he has tried to take this Australia team forward. They're certainly not as much of a bunch of bogans as they used to be. Yeah. Um, you so could even he, say you quite like them because a lot of them, a lot of yeah, them, come across yeah. as just good blokes. Yes, yeah, I think I think the absolute idiots that that influenced and pulled the rest of the team down to their level yeah. have have sorted their heads out of it, haven't they? Yes. And the ones you kind of liked are still the ones you liked, but they're just even more likable now. And weirdly, I prefer this Australian team without Tim Payne. Yeah. I don't know what it was about Tim Payne. There was just something that niggled me, just annoyed me. But he, I knew he was too yeah, good to I, be true. I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> It'll come back and bite you. <laughs> Do not send pictures of that to anyone ever. <laughs> ever. Um, Nobody. I'm, I'm going to read Langer's resignation statement because I think You're this going leads for it, into yeah. a Sorry. conversation phone, around if he's the right guy to lead England, mate. So, having been away from home since the first week of October, yesterday was a tumultuous day. That's a pretty good reading from me. And with quarantine restrictions, now that I am back and uh, unable to do anything publicly at the moment, but I want people to know I am happy with my decision and proud of what I've achieved. There have been a great deal of media speculation on my future as an Australian men's cricket coach over the last 12 months, and it has taken an enormous toll on my family. I hope through this time and throughout my tenure, I have held myself with integrity and dignity. Last night, I was offered a short-term contract until the end of the T20 World Cup in Australia, with the sentiment of going out on a high. <laughs> it goes so it on. was only a six month. Sorry, that's just. I think it's important if we jump in as we go, yeah. it's such a long yeah. statement, give you a breather. That's in a really. That's the first important dig, isn't it? It was only a six month contract. Yeah. That, it, the way he's worded that, go out on a high after six months. Yeah. yeah. Like, is there a bigger high than retaining the ashes in England Mm. Winning the Ashes 4-0 at home and being one wicket away from a whitewash and winning a T20 World Cup you had no right to win. Yeah, yeah, true enough. Yeah, he's done all right. (laughs) Um, (laughs) He's done all right. He's okay, he's okay. After careful Mm. consideration, I've decided not to accept this contract renewal. And as a result, I believe it is in everyone's best interest for the Australian cricket team to begin the next chapter immediately. 
If media reports are correct, several senior players and a couple of support staff don't support me moving forward. And it is now apparent the Cricket Australia board and you, Nick, are also keen. <laughs> don't even Nick is <laughs> keen to see the team move in What's another Nick direction. Done? And I respect What's that. that. Right? Is is Nick Nick Hockley? There's a Hockley who's done a lot of talking here. Nick Hockley, Chief Cricket Australia Chief Executive Nick Hockley. Oh, okay. Who? Who I'm just going to jump in with a little bit. He, we are naturally disappointed Justin has decided against continuing as a coach, but respect his decision and wish him all the best in the future. In other words, thank God he's gone. Yeah, kind regards. <laughs> <laughs> Nick. <laughs> um, my life has been built on values of honesty, respect, trust, truth, and performance. And if that comes across as too intense at times, I apologise. <laughs> Growling at the player at point while you're back. <laughs> it is said that in any venture, if you leave things in a better place than when you started, then you have done a good job. Whilst it is not up to me to judge, I hope Australians respect what I've achieved over the last four years in Australian cricket. From day one, I believed it was possible to both win and play the game in the spirit that is now expected from our supporters. Mm. Do you agree with that statement that so he has got them playing in the right spirit? I think he's, he's, they're better. They're much, much better than they were. They're still, they still play a brand of cricket I find a little bit mm, sometimes hard to, hard to take. It doesn't yeah. always sit right with me the way they play. Uh, I'm not saying England are perfect, by the way. Don't anyone try and say that we're saying that. Um, but I, I'm just, yeah, I'm still not a huge fan of, of, of the way they, they conduct themselves. When the tails are up, it's that thing. No respect, yeah. but we get called whingy bombs. Aussies, honestly, they're, they're the most confident, arrogant, whatever you want to call it, aggressive team in the world when they're on the up. Yep. When they're on the down, they are the moody, meaniest, yeah, mardiest bunch of blokes, bunch of supporters you'll ever come across. <laughs> they're not good losers. Let's put it that way. Not good losers. Whereas we're used to it. We're, we're cool exactly. with that now, mate. Exactly. We've learned. <laughs> um, so, yeah. For the past, mm. l- last four years, it's proven that it can be achieved. I'm very proud of the team for their efforts on and off the cricket field. I hope we have made Australians proud and earn respect from countries around the world. In terms of going out on high, I am blessed to have been part of a T20 World Cup winning squad, an Ashes winning squad, watched the test team rise to number one ranked team that is in the world today, being being selected as the Wisden Coach of the Year and being elevated to the Australian Cricket Hall of Fame all in the last five months. Well, imagine what he'd have done in six months. If he'd been given <laughs> another six months, he'd be president, prime minister. He'd, he'd have probably solved the uh, environmental issues in this planet. I don't... Jesus Christ, Justin. Give us, give us another six. Yep, he's, uh, his CV is pretty strong here. I'm grateful that today mm. I'm going out on a high. Australian cricket means the world to me. It has since I was a kid, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to play for and coach our national team. I'm thankful to the board for the opportunity, and I will take with me many cherished memories and friendships from the last four years. Hopefully a good job has been done, and I wish the team every success for the future. Now, we know he's a successful coach. He's just spent, you know, 12 tweets, possibly more at 140 characters, telling us how good a coach he's been, how he's Mm. going out on a high. The question is, if someone's this successful, and there's a moth flying in your face, if this (laughs) one's this successful, why wouldn't you... (laughs) Do everything you can in your power to keep them. If you're a football team and you're winning and winning matters, what is it? Well, first of all, <clears throat> what really strikes me with that statement is how humble Justin Langer is. <laughs> He's done bits. You know, he <laughs> probably averaged 25 and coached yeah. the under-13s. Oh, no, he won a World Cup and got <laughs> <laughs> and... It's one of those, it's like, does nobody else tell him he's done well or pat him on the back? Because he's saying he's telling the world what he wants to be told he's done a good job about. Yeah. Um, look, leadership is, people see it differently. There's a traditional view of leadership where you're shouty and, you know, you're top down, aren't you? You're, you're quite yeah. aggressive and you're confrontational and all these sort of things. And I think that's a way Justin Langer grew up playing cricket yeah. in that old Australian system. Uh, it started with, you know, Steve Waugh, you know, Mark Taylor, all that sort of era, wasn't it? It was very, very aggressive, which got us to the point where it had to stop because it had gone too far with Smith and Warner, etc. So that's where he grew up. So that's really what he wants to do, but he's having to control himself a little bit. But leadership in this day and age in any sport, especially top-level sport, they're grown men, they're not kids. They don't want someone barking at them all the time. They don't want someone shouting at them all the time. You need to deal with people on an individual basis. You can't just treat everybody the same. 
don't know. I haven't been in the dressing room with Justin Langer, so I can't say if that's what he's done or not. But it appears that he's rubbed up way too many players completely the wrong way. It's like a zoo in your garage tonight, Rob. We had a wasp earlier. We couldn't. We had to stop recording because Rob was dancing around like a, he had a pint of cider in his hand. And now he's dancing because of a moth. It's a moth. It's fine. <laughs> moth Mate, there's, bu- there's bugs everywhere. It's really, it's really muggy <laughs> weather in Auckland at the moment. It's just bringing everyone to the party. That's <laughs> all good. It's all good. But yeah, leadership is different these days. You cannot have a one-size-fits-all, um, yeah. a- aggressive, for want of a better term, coach. And if you've rubbed up this many of your squad, you're talking of a squad of 16 or 17, 18 players. If there's been, how many did he say? I can't remember if he said a number, but, you know, I'm guessing we're talking six or eight or 10 players, maybe. Maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. have expressed their frustration in his, his way of going about business. You can have all that success in the world, and I'm sure those players appreciate the success. But it doesn't mean it's going to be long-term sustained success if you don't have your team going with you. And yeah. that's what it seems to me. I think the six months was almost like a, um, what do you call it? Just a, a, I forget the word now. When you first start a job, you get a period of three months at the start, which is called... Getting your feet under the table, maybe? No, there's, a, there's an official term for it. Um, I can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, but anyway, regardless, you know what I'm talking about, everybody. Um, but yeah, I think that they looked at it as, as another period of that. And it's like, look, we need to see if you improve with the way you're dealing with people. And if you are maybe we can consider going forward. But I don't think they wanted to, did they? I think they wanted to be polite. And I think they knew that if they only offered him six months, he would re- reject it. Yeah, I And do. it made they, a decision easier to. for them. No, typical administrators, they didn't want to be confrontational in a way. They didn't want to take the big decision and say, Langer, you're out, mate. We don't like the way you're doing business. Great, thanks for all your help. You did a great job, but we want you out. They yeah. they just, they, they made it, it was, it was quite an offensive offer to Langer. They knew it would be, and he's turned it down. Yeah. And fair but play to him for turning it down. Yeah, like, yeah. if you if you've got those credentials, regardless of mm. uh, interpersonal skills that you might have, you're you're going to get employed somewhere else and mm. get your worth. Um, yeah. The qu- the question comes is he's two to one favourite for this England job at the moment. That might change over the next couple mm. of days. Uh, it might just be a re- reaction to him becoming. Mm. A Would we want him as an England cricket coach? And we're coming from a. Mm there's been different setups within this England regime, but we're coming off possibly, I can't think of the right exact word to say it, but it's all been about the players and taking care of the players um, and rest and rotation and winning games of cricket and having your best 11 on the pitch every single game is almost a thing of the past. Mm. And rightly or wrongly, depending where you sit on the scale of, you know what, they've taken care of these players, they've done a great job. Mm. Oh, wait, no, sorry, you've lost games, I don't care about that. Mm. Justin Langer, possibly, and you know, you can't say for definite, possibly, but given ev- the things that are in play at the moment, possibly doesn't fit into the mould of what England want from a cricket coach. They want to win, but they want a good person that's going to do it as well. No, I think England is doing a lot of soul-searching, there's a lot of introspection going on at the moment with the, the game as a whole, as we know. There's you know, it's one thing getting a director of cricket and a new coach or coaches involved. It's also the county structure, the calendar of the county summer, the the lack of prioritisation of red ball domestic cricket. There's so many things, you know, the, just the fundamentals. And then it's mental health, um, equality, you know, the, the lack of opportunity for, 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 you know, black, Asian, whatever background. That I don't think it, the ECB will want to take on the challenge of a confrontational coach. It's just not in this environment at the moment, on the back of a couple of years of bubbles and all the rest of it. If you get somebody that's going to be barking and all the rest of it, yes, it'd be great to get the results on the back end of it, but at what cost? You know, you, you, you'll have players going, I am, I'm not playing red ball cricket anymore. I'm going to retire from that. I'm going to go around the world playing white ball cricket and fill my bank account. That's what potentially will happen. Maybe some of these England players need challenging like that. I don't know. <laughs> I saw that on the screen, Rob. Another little <laughs> buzzing <laughs> thing flying around. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think the ECB or whoever, the director, you know, Strauss, et cetera, will, will want a play, a bloke like Langer. Yeah. And I don't think he's a good fit for English cricket at the moment. Jokes incoming. Yeah, we don't like winning. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. But likewise, <laughs> if I'm Justin Langer, unless I really hate Cricket Australia now, I wouldn't <laughs> want to go from all this stress, all this time away that you're talking mm. about in your 140 characters, mate. You broke yeah. the rules of 140 characters. <laughs> but then going to take on a job the other side of the world where you'd either have to move your family 
or be away from them the whole time. Like he's a winning enough coach that he will walk into any franchise and get paid. Yeah, I was going to say, what would you do? The T Twenty circuit, mate. Yeah, what would you rather do? What would you rather do? Go and coach England. England, the old enemy, isn't it? You know, why yeah. would an Australian want to take the England job? Like you say, unless he was really wanting to uh, show his ex, you know, what he's moved on. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, go and go and be coach of one of the uh, Big Bash teams. You'll probably get yourself a gig in the IPL at some point in the not-too-distant future. Yeah. Um, see where you go. I mean, uh, Pakistan, potentially. You know, the, 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 there's loads of opportunities for him all around the world. The 100. He can come and be a coach of a 100 team. Lucky him if he's not already. I don't know. Don't really care.